table was brought to us at promptly at 7 o'clock this morning. Good morning. And uh, he's had her pot of coffee. <laughs> I had my cup of coffee. Blew out of our window. We're right next to some very tall buildings and some are under construction. Holy moly, that thing is really up there. Door is the church building. We're right downtown in the Hyatt Collins. Right across the street that's being reconstructed. We're on the 19th floor. Church is another tall building under construction. It, it, unusual in architecture and shape. There are windows and this is what we see right across the street. And I don't know which way is north and south, but something under construction. And the tall buildings in the background. About the 15th floor is a tennis court. And that's beautiful. Again, in the city limits of... Where's the center piece? In the center. In the morning. Melbourne. 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 Street station on our left. The first passenger rail service in Australia took place here from 1854. The steam train took passengers from here to a place called Sandridge. Well, the steam train's now gone, and he said, we tried to see whether it was possible to uh, start a colony there. However, with a lack of food and water in 1880, some of them are a bit older, particularly the one on the right. Of this cast iron lattice wood. We were going a little fast. It's his cottage, but he never lived in it. Beautiful park, though. These are called Iceland poppies on top. Oh, on top? Oh. And then, of course, we had the marigolds and the alyssum. Cottage at the conservatory. Side, fireplace, dining hall, bedroom. It's pretty. And look at the back side of Cook's cottage. She was just upstairs in those very small bedrooms. Trees. Beautiful flowers. Lots of people and children. It's supposed to be around 72 today. Observatory. Beautiful flowers. Yes, and then the variety. We're inside the conservatory. Boy, I don't get hay here with me. I'm lucky. The flower. Yeah, put the flower. That's not an orchid. I don't know what that one is. I'm going to take another one, Chisel, but this has got to be an orchid. Okay, I would punch you against the orchid. Sure, sure. Oh. Yeah, really, yeah. Stadium. And they attract a crowd of 99,000 spectators just short of the capacity. There's a whole pile of UFOs landed here a few weeks ago. <laughs> Drink, drink and drive yeah. sign. It's an Australian wide idiot. campaign. He's, his family Yada, donated 100,000 pounds. What on the top the side? Clear on the bottom side. The presents for the never returned. For the rich. For the uh, rich. If you'd like to purchase a property in this area, to rack $8.25 million. I suggest if you're looking at this price bracket, you can talk. Yeah. Rather fitting. We'll make our way down through Turak Village now. <laughs> now the story... We're in the botanical gardens now. This is a daisy tree. Age separation tree. No, no, no. <laughs> what is it? It's a botanical gardens. Botanical gardens. 
And they're supposed to be about the second law of the botanical gardens. We said that. And I thought you didn't get me. I got that. <laughs> okay. And it's supposed to be second largest in the world. <laughs> There's a fly on Next to face. London. I don't see it. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Okay. Royal Botanical Gardens. I can read. <laughs> no. Helen under the lilac tree. No, it's not lilacs. I don't know what they are. Uh, Stoves and black swans. Oh, swans. Well, sure, what were you going to call them? Geese. Geese? Those are swans. Oh, look, those were not there swimming. Can you catch the river on uh, the lake? There's a beautiful scenery on the other side. Beautiful selection trees in the botanical garden. Island right across the way with special trees and greenery. It's kind of a remembrance for the uh, World War II. in Melbourne on field day and uh, they are visiting the art museum there are the fountains but look at the children hotel is right over there, the one with the gold uh, Ely Bob's on it. Interesting. Oh my, look at this. Look at this. I'm going up the scale. This is lit at night. Just beautiful. Art Museum, excuse me. Waiting for our tickets. And uh, there's some display of so what's occurring. Where are we leading upwards? Way to the auditorium where we just uh, took some pictures. easy to do and you'll see lots of cars blocking the road with it. The idea is that you want to make a right hand turn so you stay in a left hand lane Now you drive forward into a green light Now you stop facing a green light on the left hand side wanting to turn right. You wait for it to go orange and red, drive forward towards the red light, make a right hand turn heading out the green light. <laughs> oh, she's telling us to stop. 
<laughs> There's our lady meter maid. That's an all-day tour, yes. Well, it goes around the city every hour. Under Saks Fifth Owner, it's a plaza. an unbelievable room. We're in the corner of the whole building. It's 32 stories. Our own corner little TV. Well, beautiful day. We're going out shopping now in a few minutes. The Yar River. That winds through uh, Melbourne, and then some more of downtown. This is just from our hallway entrance to the elevator. Hotel, the gray one is not ours, but this, this is uh, the beginning of the 19 stories where we are. Across the street that we took a picture of from up above. Well, I'm looking at the uh, model admiring. This is a Georgia's store that doesn't have prices on it. It's like Saks Fifth Cathedral. Beautiful architecture. Policeman, direct traffic. And uptown. The hair is in London. Elizabeth and Bourke, the end of the shopping mall, and we end up at this structure here, the blue sky. Department store, NYERS, that covers two full blocks underneath the street, six stories high. We flew into Christchurch, New Zealand. Well, got here about 7 o'clock, 7.30 last night, and this is what we viewed in the morning as we... Uh, get up and that's the uh, Chinese place where mom and I had a bowl of wonton soup and some fried lice Going across the street downstairs breakfast area in front of the hotel I hope they get some better pictures of those uh, British architecture. Way on the heights it leads to a view. A view on City of Christ Church down the road. Surrounding foothills. Beautiful views. Homes up on the hillside, kind of look like uh, Portland Heights area. Uh, That's a restaurant down there. Restaurant, looks like it was converted from a church. The restaurant, more home. It's the sun, a beautiful hillside country. from the top. See the downtown area there, the little few high rises? Zealand. Beautiful lavender. Flower is called the Pride of the Red. We do have a small there. hollow, and of course, in the winter time, things are generally a little bit uh, calmer. By having a little bit of the greenery growing and what have you, it helps to combat this pollution problem. In actual fact, we have a funny little bylaw here in Christchurch. It just acts as a drain for the port hills. At times of heavy rain and things like that, it will flow quite high, but basically takes most of the moisture from the small streams and what have you. That Cathedral. We're going to 
sure at this moment. Interior shot. Alter. Canterbury <laughs> University. Damn. We're going in right now. Part of this, but this is the whale skeleton, 87 feet long, and the width of those flippers. 21 feet. Next. Oh, in the flowers. Botanical garden, I did. Pansies. Pansies and tulips. It's springtime, you can tell. And it's winter time at home. There's some tulips. That's like our, our monkey trees at home. Look at the ones to the left there that are growing so tall. Oh my. They really grow differently, don't they? Uh-huh. tree. Can you believe it? They really do. It. It's called the Soralia or Pinata. River, an artisan river. And someone canoeing up there. River flows all through the town, kind of circles in and out. So pretty. They look like delphinium a little bit, but I don't know. Color. Pet center, courtyard, and its buildings. Little outdoor restaurant in this center. Six dollars. Sandwich. Going on tour. All of them have uniforms. View from inside the restaurant. Courtyard. Look at them. View. Like a flower clock. Ten after two. Waterfall. Lumen, glittering, lathering rug. Would that be? Uh -huh. What do you call it? A little bit of in, uh, Italy coming down the Avon River. <laughs> Where well, we're having dinner, uh, 23 Rugby Street, with the Henderson family. Dinner here, inside the home. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yes. Go close. It's fantastic. Well, I've got a zoom right on it. You got a zoom? Uh -huh. Oh my God! Four, five, eight. Do it again. I have one just like that. I know. I should. You should get it. I have it down in the game room. We bought that in an inn. You know what? But I would bring it all on springs, and the mini man just yeah. Yeah. And I think I'll take. I'll see if I can get it. No lean. What's a please? Those are a family room. Oh, is that right? I have. Downstairs and I have uh, a yeah. But it's a private home. Living will. You know, oh, I, so I, I entertain a great one. Come from Connecticut. What's, what's uh, the second time? Here it goes. Laughing, it sounds like. What's your head? That's just American tea. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. That's just American tea, man. Thank you very much. Just a little remembering. Oh, we have seniors are playing in the same home. Are they playing this? Now. It'll be.
camera, I'll take your picture with the dog. <laughs> Morning of the 27th of October, Saturday, the Park Royal Hotel where we stayed. We're on our way now to Mount Cook where we'll land uh, on one of the glaciers in the uh, uh, ski plain. Beautiful thing. The castle in Salzburg, from the corner of one of the downtown streets. Original wedding church of the Van Drup. So this is where they really had their wedding, because in the movie they used for the interior a church in Monte and for the facade the cathedral. So this is why I wanted to bring you over here and show it to you, because you see it here the last time. From the other side of the town you don't see it. So that because he had reopened the salt mine in the vicinity. When I say reopened, it means they have been known before, and they have been known before by a Celtic tribe called the Alons, and the Alons gave the city the name Juvavia, which means the settlement underneath the sky of God. Then the Romans took the name and twisted it a little bit around and made Juvavum out of it when they came. And they came here um, 15 after Christ and stayed for not quite 500 years, approximately 500 years they stayed here. And then after the Romans there was a vacuum, some eastern tribes were sweeping uh, through, also Bavarians, and then finally in 696, so around 700, this city was founded by Holy Rupert and he reopened the salt mines again that the Celts already knew and therefore the name Salzburg or Salt Fortress. The exceptional thing, the outstanding thing between Salzburg and other Austrian cities is that we have been independent from Austria until 1816. So a very, very long time, and we're just a short time ago united with Austria. Why? Because we have been only ruled by bishops, archbishops, and prince bishops until almost 1816. It was Napoleon who ended the bishop uh, ruling in Salzburg, and he um, invested more or less another ruler called Ferdinand of Tuscany, then the Bavarians uh, took over for some time and after the Viennese Congress, Salzburg was united with Austria. So it was due to Napoleon that we more or less joined Austria in 1816 after the Viennese Congress. So the outstanding thing is that here, all the influence you see is two things. The influence is Roman Catholic due to the Archbishop that were ruling and also a very strong Italian influence in all the arts that you can see. Salzburg also is called the Second Rome. So it is because the archbishops, when they came from Rome to this area, they had the ideas of Italian beauty in their mind. They were bringing and calling Italian artists to Salzburg to copy it and uh, have a little copy of Rome here. And so therefore all this Italian influence until 1816. So we have had those rulers that were archbishops but also had the ruling power of princes. And we have had one ruler like all the other countries who was outstanding. He was outstanding in every way and very remarkable. And he almost planned, initiated or started or constructed everything in the downtown area. His name was Wolf Dietrich von Reitenau. If you can get rid of him, you can become Archbishop. So, Marcus Dittichus, with the help of the Bavarians, imprisoned Wolf Dietrich up on the fortress. In 1612, he barred his windows because he didn't want him to see the daylight again, and he was also afraid if he...